Hey everybody, Ralph Cole here, Senior Director of Federal Government Affairs here at AANA DC offices. Um, in preparation for our Mid-Year Assembly 2017, I wanted to go through a, a quick video um, uh, prior to your lobbying visits uh, that touched base on do's and don'ts of an effective lobby visit here on Capitol Hill. First and number one thing, be prepared. Uh, prior to coming to DC, we will be supplying you with material, one-pagers and talking points uh, for the issues that we're going to be covering during our uh, meetings on Capitol Hill. Um, for many of you who are seasoned vets, um, you know, it's, it's still important that you go through and, and make sure that you're up to date on exactly what you're going to be talking about, uh, exactly the talking points that we provided. Um, legislation and bill numbers could have changed since last year. Uh, the issues, kind of how we're framing them, could have changed. So please be sure that you take the time to go through your materials, uh, get up to speed, make sure you're well prepared for your lobbying visits. I think it's important to remember not to memorize. You don't want to go in there and just rattle off talking points in a very rote manner. You want to take the time to learn um, the talking points and the arguments that we've provided. See which ones you connect with. See which ones that you feel the most comfortable conveying uh, because that's when you're really going to get the most value. When you really believe in the argument or, or have a connection to the argument that you're looking to make, it comes across in a better light. It can be more effective during your time uh, with a congressional visit. So decide what points, issues you connect most with, uh, run with those and make sure you're prepared prior to meeting with your legislator or staff. Plan ahead for group meetings. Um, as those of you who have been here before, and for those of you who haven't been here before, um, you're very likely gonna be meeting with a, a group of more than two or three. Um, so you're gonna have CRNAs from back home in the district or the state uh, who are gonna be joining you for your meetings. Uh, I think it's critical that you take the time prior uh, to meet with the group um, and make some determinations about how you're gonna be handling the meeting on Capitol Hill. Who's gonna start the meeting? Who's gonna do some, in, some of the introductory stuff? Um, assign issues to each attendee. Is there an issue expert in the group? Is there a veteran? Is there an active duty military member? Uh, is there someone who works in a rural or a critical access hospital? You know, find if there's any built in, you know, obvious issue expert who can handle a particular issue uh, when it's time to discuss that. What is the most important ask for that particular office? So this, you know, kind of kind of knowing who you're meeting with. Uh, is a legislator very concerned with veterans issues? What's their background? What's their pet projects? You know, a, a lot of members of Congress now are, are looking at chronic pain management, and opioid crisis. So it'd be good to know if there's a natural connection there that you can really focus on something that they find value in and connect with prior to the meeting. Coordinate and plan for taking a photo. Uh, no more than one or two cameras, please. Um, you know, the last thing you want is to spend an undue amount of time uh, with the member of Congress or with the congressional staff uh, trying to organize 17 different pictures from 17 different cameras. So please kind of make the determination whether someone's going to use a camera or a, or a photo, how you can share that after the meeting um, so you can very, have a very short amount of time taking the picture and you have more time to focus on the issues at hand. Know your audience. Um, are you meeting with the member or the staff? What is the member's background? Are they a veteran or a healthcare provider? Uh, what committee is the member or senator on? If, they're, if you're meeting with someone from the House or Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, you're obviously going to want to touch on the full practice authority issue. If you're meeting with energy and commerce or ways and means on the House side or the Senate Finance or Health Education, Labor and Pensions Committee on the Senate side, you really going to want to focus on the repeal and replace efforts currently underway in Congress. Uh, congressional Republicans, as of today, uh, have introduced a repeal and replace plan. Uh, it is kind of hard to really figure out what the likelihood of this initial offering uh, moving forward, uh, but there is a strong commitment with uh, efforts to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act. So if you're meeting with one of those committees of a jurisdiction, make sure you're stressing the provider non-discrimination and the value that CRNAs bring to any meaningful healthcare delivery system reform. Appropriations, um, obviously we, we wanted to focus on Title VIII, nursing workforce development issues. Uh, this year is a, a little bit different than years past in that programmatic funding for programs such as Title VIII um, are on the chopping block. There's conversations about potentially uh, looking to cut funding to specific programs. So we want to ensure this year that we're really focused with the appropriators on the value 
of Title VIII Nursing Workforce Development Programs and ensuring that we have the trained, highly skilled nursing workforce, including APRNs and CRNAs, to meet the growing demand of healthcare services from a retiring uh, baby boom population. Um, this is cri critical. Uh, has the member supported or opposed or stayed neutral on our issues in the past? Uh, we've prepared a chart for your reference uh, that will be available on our website that goes through each of the issues we've been working on in the past several years uh, and assigns opposed, support, or stayed neutral for each member of Congress who's currently uh, serving in the 115th. So take the time to look at that uh, because whether you're going in with a supporter, uh, someone who's in opposition, or someone who's neutral, um, you can kind of shape kind of the argumentation that you're going to be using during that meeting. Show your value. Um, CRNAs are uniquely qualified to bring, uh, address the kind of the, the, the tripod of meaningful healthcare delivery system reform. Um, CRNAs bring uh, the ability to reduce costs, improve access, and maintain the highest quality care. So show this value to your uh, member of Congress or United States Senator. They really wanna hear what's, what's, how this is going to affect their district. Um, all of these men and women uh, have been elected to serve their constituents. Uh, constituents matter uh, because the next election is right around the corner and most of uh, the folks here in Congress want to uh, keep their jobs. So anytime you can show them value that specifically relates to their district, whether it be a, a large veterans population, whether it be a number of critical or rural access hospitals that CRNAs help to staff and keep open, um, it's, it's really important to, to try to find that way to show uh, the type of value that CRNAs bring on a daily basis uh, to the member or senator um, that specifically rates, relates to their state or district. Always fairly address your adversary's arguments. As I said, you know, I, I always say that I'm, I'm much more comfortable making our arguments than theirs. You know, they, they rely on a lot of, um, you know, essentially, the doc-centric ethos of because I, I'm a doctor and I say so, this is, this is the case. Uh, we all know that that is not uh, necessarily true. Uh, and luckily we have the facts and evidence to back up our concerns. So always just take the time to, to fairly and, 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 and adequately address uh, concerns that may have been brought by our anesthesiologist colleagues, uh, but always do it in a constructive and professional manner. Be gracious and friendly every time. Um, you always want to leave a positive taste in someone's mouth after a meeting. Uh, you want to ensure that they have uh, a genuine like and respect for you. It's, it's critical. Um, you know, folks who, who like and respect you are more likely to become an advocate for you inside the office uh, when making the case for their, their member of Congress or United States Senator to sign on legislation uh, to support a dear colleague to make a phone call on our behalf. Be reliable. Um, you want to build a, a relationship based on trust and respect. Um, part of that is if you say you're going to do something, if you're going to provide additional information, if you're going to follow up with something that they ask for, uh, always make sure you do it in a timely manner. Things can move pretty quickly or very slowly on Capitol Hill, uh, but you always want to make sure that when you, you say you're going to do something, uh, follow up, follow through, make sure that they have uh, the information that they need and be a resource. You always wanna offer yourself up as a resource moving forward. Um, you wanna create the type of relationship that when an anesthesia related question comes up, you wanna be the person that they come to. You don't want it to be your anesthesiologist colleague. So when an issue that comes up relating to full practice authority, to nursing workforce development funding, anything related to the delivery of anesthesia, you're the first person that the staff or a member of Congress thinks of. Uh, you're the person that they wanna reach out to to get additional information from. Don't be nervous. Um, I, for, for some of you first timers or, or folks who have only been here once or twice, um, you know, the, the marble and dark wood can be a little intimidating, uh, but please don't be nervous. You are the expert and the constituent. Um, you know more about providing anesthesia than anyone you're gonna be meeting with on Capitol Hill. And you're also a constituent. As I mentioned earlier, um, folks wanna get reelected. So they know when they have an active and engaged member of their constituency coming to Capitol Hill, uh, that, but that person is likely going to be turning out during election time. So, you know, they're there to serve you. Don't be nervous. You're the expert. Just, you know, go in and tell them about the great work that you do every day. Congressional staff are, are typically younger. Uh, they, there's a lot of turnover, especially on the House side. So, 
Uh, the individual you're going to be meeting with might be completely new to healthcare, might be completely new to the issues, uh, but they're probably going to be in their mid-20s. Um, and, you know, so just, just take the time to fairly address their concerns, uh, make sure you're getting them up to speed on our issues, uh, but don't be nervous. It's, it's just a meeting. You know the issues. Just convey it in, in a positive, uh, meaningful manner. Don't be argumentative. I think that speaks for itself. Uh, even with someone who's been opposition to uh, our issues in the past, you always want to keep it respectful, professional, uh, and thoughtful. You never want to start start to get you know to start get down and dirty and, and argumentative with a member of Congress or their staff. Don't fake an answer. Um, this is something that uh, I can't stress enough. You know, if if someone asks you a question that is outside the, the depth of your knowledge, it's always okay to say so. And you know, you just let them know that, sorry, I don't have that information at this time, but I'd happy, be happy to get it for you and supply it to you by X date. You know, let them know when you're gonna get it to them by and stick to that. Uh, but never, never make something up, essentially, because we're, we're working on building relationships of trust. And once you lose that trust by providing them false information, um, the likelihood of, of creating a really positive working relationship becomes slim and none. Don't be political. Um, you are not here to advocate any other agenda than uh, CRNA specific uh, issues. Um, we don't care about their stance on gun rights uh, or anything else. We care about how they feel about CRNA full practice authority and the BHA how they feel about CRNA's role in, in the delivery of high quality chronic pain management services. Um, this is very specific and we don't want to get outside um, of, of CRNA issues specifically during these meetings. Don't underestimate the value of meeting with staff. Um, staff could be your biggest advocate in an office. Um, staff are basically the gatekeepers. Uh, if you get staff on your side on an issue, they're going to be the ones during their Friday meeting when they're going through um, uh, issues, when they're going through bills, when they're going through dear colleagues. They're the one who's going to be making the case inside the office for what you have asked them to do. So ensure that you are creating a relationship with the staffer uh, in a way that they want to do something for you, that they want to proactively work to get their boss on in support of what we're working on. Many staff already have a relationship with the AANA. Um, if you have any questions re regarding uh, any staffer and, and our interactions with them, please feel free to ask. Uh, staff are the ones who draft and review legislation. You know, as I mentioned, um, they're, the, they're going to be the advocates in the office. They're the gatekeeper. They're the ones who are, who are creating the memos for their boss to look at and sign off on. So getting staff buy-in is critical to everything that we want to achieve here uh, on Capitol Hill. Tips for meeting with past opponents. Uh, these, are, these are meetings that can get a little uncomfortable if you let them. Uh, we do have some pretty uh, staunch opponents on Capitol Hill, uh, including Representative Andy Harris from Maryland, who's an anesthesiologist. Uh, but there's always ways to find an area of agreement. Uh, focus on building a positive relationship. Never be argumentative or combative. Stick to the facts and be gracious. You know, I think this, this line right here kind of is a good segue to, uh, to addressing concerns of, of a past opponent. You know, I understand you've had some concerns in the past, uh, but I'm here today to kind of uh, take the time to, to answer any questions you have about the high quality care CRNAs provide and our ability to, to meet the demands of our veterans. Um, you know, and there's, a, there's always a way to get to, um, get to having a positive dialogue. You may not always win them over, uh, but it is, essential that you try to have a positive interaction, whether it be with opponent or supporter. And that's it. Um, do's and don'ts of lobbying visits. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please reach out to me directly. And I'm looking forward to seeing everyone here in DC uh, next month for a very successful mid-year assembly. Thank you guys.